All right, so this is crazy. I posted this thing in the community posts on YouTube the other day, actually a day ago. When will the Antichrist come? And well, the poll has its own implications, but whatever. What I wanted to highlight was this comment here by Master G. Moore. He says, the Antichrist will desecrate the third temple somewhere around Yom Kippur if I recall the prophet Jeremiah correctly. Once the temple is desecrated, the tribulation begins. He's talking about the end times. But right now, I suspect we are in the birthing pains, and it's very possible he is among us now, as the Jews in Israel have a serious momentum in rebuilding the third temple, especially as the vines on the eastern wall are spelling in Hebrew God's name. What? The vines on the eastern wall are spelling out in Hebrew God's name? I was like, there's no way. But I looked into it, and I think he's right. This is insane. There are pictures of this, because this happened over a year ago there's i found some videos of this happening or people noticing it over a year ago the most recent ones i found are from three months ago and two months ago uh, there's this guy zahi shaked who's an israeli to israeli tour guide and he posted this video i found the best part where he's facing the wall here uh there's just these vines growing on the wall there's uh, a bit of vines here, a bit of vines here, a bit of vines there, and then there's just some other ones that don't look like they're any, in any particular shape down here. Two months ago, they still are here, and here he is pointing out the different vines and what they mean. So, in Hebrew, God's name is yod He vav He, y h w h if it's transliterated into English. In Hebrew, though, the characters look suspiciously like these vines we have here. If we take a look at Exodus 27, this isn't, I didn't pick this verse for a specific reason, just that it's a verse where it says the Lord your God. Uh, here it is in English, you shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. If we scroll down, we get to the Hebrew here. Here is the name of God spelled out in Hebrew, it's Yahweh. And look, we have four characters here. Now, Hebrew is written from right to left, not left to right, like we like we do in English. Here we have the character Yod, then the character He, then the character Vav, and then He again, Yahweh. Now, if we go back to these pictures of the eastern wall, this one is the best one. There are three letters here. This looks like Yod. This looks like He, and this looks like Vav. There is currently, as we, as we know it, as of two months ago, there's not another He in the wall. Uh, there's, a, there's a bit to the left of this. If it pans over, you'll see there's a bit here where it looks like it could be another one growing in. Um, you know, a lot of people have speculated that there it will grow in and some significant thing will happen. But if we look at Revelation, we know that there are signs and wonders that will happen. And this seems to be a taste of the signs and wonders that will eventually happen. Here is an article about it from, let's see, this was in July of last year, actually. So this is well over a year ago. And as of two months ago, at least they are still there, but it was known at least over a year ago. Uh, there's a rabbi, Yosef Berger, the rabbi of King David's tomb on Mount Zion. He ascribed the appearance of the letters to a verse in Deuteronomy. And all the peoples of the earth shall see that Hashem's name is proclaimed over you, and they shall stand in fear of you. Deuteronomy 28.10 Hashem is another name for God. There's lots of names used in the Bible for God. If we look at uh, Deuteronomy 28.10 here on Bible Hub, there's a bunch of different translations into English. The one I like the best is the Berean Standard Bible, but you know you have all these different ones here. Uh, it says, And then all the peoples of the earth will see that you are called by the name of the Lord, and they will stand in awe of you. And again, if we go down here, we see the name of the Lord, Yahweh, is that same word in Hebrew. This seems like a wonderful thing to any Jew and any Christian out there. Uh, to anyone who is a skeptic about all this kind of stuff, this seems like a crackpot cons conspiracy thing. I, I, I am fully aware of that. 
uh, without sounding condescending, hopefully, I will uh, reference the Bible in a way that I hope will be helpful to you. 1 Corinthians 2.14, and I'm, I'm not trying to say that Christians and Jews and the people of the book are somehow better than skeptics or anything, or were smarter than or anything like that, but literally, the natural man, meaning the skeptical person or the person who doesn't accept the supernatural things, or the person who doesn't believe in God, does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, and he cannot understand them because they are spiritually discerned. Spiritually discerned not meaning natural or scientific or empirical. If we take a look back at this wall, we have these vines that look like they're in the shape of Hebrew letters. And to anyone who knows Hebrew, or to anyone who can just look up the Hebrew, if you are a Christian or if you're a Jew, it makes it starts to make a lot of sense, especially if you've read a lot of your Bible. If you're a skeptic, it doesn't make sense. And like the verse in 1 Corinthians says, it looks like foolishness. There are many other videos out there to prove Christianity. I'm not here to prove Christianity in this video. I'm just saying this is one of those things that stood out to me more than anything else in the past couple years as a sign of the last days, and specifically the last days of the last days. Now, nobody knows the hour that the Antichrist will come, and nobody knows the hour that Christ will come back. But we can have signs and wonders, per the Bible's teaching, that these things are getting close, that the time is accelerating. As the Bible says, all nature speaks to the glory of God. You know, if we look outside, and if you look with a spiritual perspective, you see the beauty of creation, you see the clouds in the sky, and you see the wonder of all of the things built on the earth, you see the wonder of just a single human life, or relationships that we have, or so many other things that are just wonderful. They speak to the creation, or the glory of creation of God. To the natural person, this sounds like hogwash, and I think there's so much of our society that is natural and not spiritually oriented that we don't even bother with the natural world as a proof of God existing because we just look at it as a bunch of atoms. I think this is the first thing that we're seeing where God is using the natural world to start being a little bit more uh, conspicuous, a little bit more discreet about all of this. If you are not a Christian, I would take this as a sign that maybe you should look into Christianity. Maybe you should look into the Old Testament and the New Testament, see how they link together. The Old Testament is God telling people that he will redeem us, and the New Testament is him showing us how he did it. And uh, yeah, I hope this video was as shocking to you as it was to me. Um, I will try and keep you updated if I hear anything else about this. See you next time.